G'day, hi and welcome. It's gray outside and I'm so bored, so I'm making a ton of videos. I got a little idea here for you. Check out some of my violins over there. Uh, check out my world's most amazing cheap saxophone. There you go. And my, this is my studio slash, yeah, story, everything. So, sorry about the mess, but I want to talk to you about something that, uh, before you do your next gig, how to shake it up a little bit. Um, got a little guitar there, got to fix up for my nephew. Uh, I got a violin back there. I have yet to play that thing live. Uh, I only got it a couple of years ago, only a couple of years ago. Um, and I haven't played it live yet, uh, in front of an, in front of an audience. And I will, I will. I got a couple of little jigs that I do. I wouldn't play an entire night with that yet, but I got obviously an electric guitar here. I got an electric violin here and I've got an acoustic that has a pickup in it. Uh, the electronics on that thing was long fried out, but that, that's a workhorse guitar in a, in, a, in a half. Another instrument I used to have was a mandolin. Now, being a guitar player is my first instrument, uh, whatever. I try to play all kinds of instruments to do something, uh, you know, to, to learn a new experience, that type of thing. Now, one thing I did do when I got my mandolin years ago was because it was lighter and smaller than the guitar and I was lazier, I haven't changed much. Uh, I would bring it to jam nights rather than the, and I would just learn whatever I knew on the acoustic guitar, I would learn it on the mandolin and go up and play it. And it would blow people away because some people didn't even know what a mandolin was. And I was just like, I could do an entire gig with a mandolin. And I don't know, I did, yes, I did do... Uh, cause, uh, I, I was too lazy to bring my 12 string. So I just brought in this mandolin and I remember a few times there was just like, um, people were just like, wow, like it's just, it's a sound that they're not used to and nothing had really changed. I just picked a different instrument to do the same job that I'd normally do, but it changed the dynamic. And because it changed the dynamic, the audience was taken by it and it really, 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 really gave them something cool to remember. And uh, I've always had great responses to uh, from people whenever I'd play the mandolin live because it was something they didn't normally see. It was something they didn't normally hear. Uh, the songs were nothing new. They knew the songs. They were all, you know, your top 40 classic stuff, you know, like nothing, nothing new under the sun that way. But it was just it gave them a new experience. So if you're doing the one-man band thing, uh, which I'm trying to get back into. It's just, a, I, I, I live in the middle of nowhere now and, and, uh, my vehicle options are, you know, I'm trying to fi work that out. And uh, once I work that out, uh, I'll be back into it. And mind you, this was supposed to be happening about two years ago or three years ago that I was supposed to be getting, uh, or about two years ago, I was supposed to have this all done, but I'm a little bit behind schedule. Not a big deal, but you know, uh, but when I get back into it again, one of the things I'm going to do is uh, give them a variety of little instruments. So I will probably get another mandolin down the road. Uh, but what's going to probably pay for the mandolin is probably the money I'm going to make with this guitar. This guitar is already paid for. I could burn this guitar right now. I, I would not burn this guitar. I love this guitar. It's a $400 guitar that owes me nothing. Why? Because it's paid for itself once or twice anyway. Uh, and not even really trying, you know, like... The average night would be about 60 to 120 bucks a night that I would make with this guitar. I don't know how many gigs I did with it, maybe six or whatever. One night was 100, I made about 175, another 125, another night probably about 60. Uh, panhandled with it a few times just to see what had happened, maybe 15, 20 bucks there. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just that guitar that, you know, you work for me. You work for me. <laughs> don't you forget it. You work for me. Um, but I love this guitar. I love this guitar because it, it, it's, it's, it's the workhorse that gets the job done. But I also loved, you know, okay, you play, maybe you start the, the night off with maybe two or three songs with the guitar. Then you put that down, you grab the mandolin and you can carry the two of them. In this case, I got the, uh, you know, the do the same song with the electric violin. I, I've got a few things that I'm going to probably, uh, work with that. And that should be very cool to see live. And, um, it just changes the dynamic to the point where that because you're now moving from one instrument to another, you're doing something else. You're, you're, you're now becoming more than a musician. You're, you're becoming an entertainer. 
And one thing about when you're playing in a studio, or in my little studio right in underneath there, my my, my studio, or if you're in a like a multi-million dollar studio, you're a musician. You're a musician first when you're doing that. When you're practicing, you are a musician first. Okay, but when you're in front of an audience, you are a performer entertainer first. The musician is the sideshow. The profession is entertainer. And if you, when you approach things like that, you, you look at things different. Uh, and you look at newer ways and more creative ways of just uh, throwing stuff in front of the audience so that you give them a different experience that other people aren't giving them. And uh, if you're a guitar player, the easiest transition, grab yourself a mandolin. A ukulele. Anything like that. Do a couple of songs with a ukulele, go back to the guitar. Do a couple of songs with the guitar, go to the, the, the mandolin. Once you're done with the mandolin, uh, grab a, a violin or whatever. One thing I was never crazy on, although a lot of guys do it with the one-man band things, is the, the, the backing tracks. Although you can do a lot of cool things with backing tracks, I find it loses a bit of the purity for myself. I'm, I'm not criticizing anybody that do because there's some uh, looper pedals and stuff like that that people use. is just unbelievable. But look at these drummers that go out and, for example, with drums. Who could ever fill uh, an entertaining night with drums? Just drums, nothing but drums. And they do it with these looper pedals and stuff like that. And uh, I've seen one guy, he only performs with a bass. Not a stand-up bass, just a regular electric bass. And he does these crazy slapping techniques. And he does these songs that are just, you know, even if you don't know, you've never heard these songs before. You just enjoy it because it's something pure and it's something new. And I remember watching this guy and I'm just like, this guy is just wicked he i can't remember what his name was but uh i never seen a bass player play like that before and, and it was just he was doing unorthodox things nothing really complicated but just different that gave you a different flavor or something a, a new creativity and that's something that i really have learned myself to don't be afraid to bring in things that might seem a little odd and ridiculous at first uh but might go off very very well like uh, for example um I want to get, this is a flying bee, uh, if you don't know who Dimebag Daryl is, uh, he was the guitar player for Pantera uh, that got shot on stage, and unfortunately the, their drummer just passed away uh, recently from the making of this video. Uh, but he had this, uh, it was called the MT style guitar, but there's a ukulele, it's 150 bucks for this ukulele, and it's the MT style. And it, it's just, it's something that if somebody's seen it, they would remember this bizarre little instrument. And that's what creates the intrigue. It's a shiny new object uh, for the audience. And that's what you're going to give these people is that shiny new object that they're not, they're not used to. And because they're not used to, it it, it's blows you away. Uh, for example, pick your favorite musician. It doesn't matter who it is. Uh, in any genre. And the first time you heard them, it pro they probably blew you away. The 1500th time you listened to it, you, you knew what was coming. You know what I mean? It's like, it's still special, it's still magical, and you still love it. But uh, it, it no longer has that, uh, the shiny newness on it. That it's just, it's something you appreciate because of the, the uh, skill that was played and, and, the, and the timing and, and the piece or whatever you, you, you appreciate that. But the, the razzle-dazzle part is like, you're now, you're more into it because you understand it better than how it's played and, and whatever. It's the same like the fiddle. Like the fiddle you know, these things will blow you away until you learn how to play them. I'm still in the process. I'm only really technically, technically 10 years of playing, but only really playing them for about two years. So I sound like a, a guitar player who's been playing a violin for two years. But that said, I, I'm starting to get better. And it won't take long to be able to do some simple stuff that will be impressive on stage uh, that people are going to like. And that's... When you're doing that, uh, that that's when you, you start to build an audience. But you also start to build, um, um, you get something out of it too. You, 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 get, you get that uh, enjoyment out of it too. Uh, so, yeah, don't be afraid to try different things. Like, um, you know, playing a night with just an electric guitar. I've only done that once where I did a jam night with an electric guitar. But the guitar I was using was quite extravagant. It was a double neck uh uh, Epiphone G1275. So it was like, everybody wanted me to play Hotel California, <laughs> you know, and Stairway to Heaven on it. It was like, oh, uh, you got the, the guitars. It's like two guitars. I got rid of that guitar. Long got rid of that guitar, but it was a guitar that I could pull it off. It, it sounded acoustic -y enough that I could do that, but I, I was able to do so much with that guitar. 
without a band behind me, it was it was kind of it was very unique. The six strings are a little bit trickier. Um, you know, you you got to be a little bit different. Uh, you can't really pull off as much with just the uh, six string uh, electric, unless you start thinking a little bit differently. Um, sometimes you can, sometimes you can, uh, just doing that. But usually the acoustic is the better way to go. It's the safer option. Uh, but yeah, those are just some little tips that I'm going to give to people that, uh, might be, you know, wondering how they could spice up their show. So maybe the song you play with the acoustic all the time, maybe get a, a cheap ukulele, uh, one of those, uh, three string, uh, seagull things there that, it's it's just you know it's like four D strings on it. It's it's literally it's a really cool instrument. I'd like to get one just to do a couple of songs on it because nobody's heard that before. Um, and just do songs you know, but just with a different instrument. So it's just it gives them a different flavor in that little shiny new object that keeps the the audience uh, spellbound and uh, interested and uh, makes a great experience for everybody. So I'm gonna leave it at that. So just my little tip. So. When I do get out uh, playing these things, hopefully will be very soon. Um, I got a little extra money coming in now. It's not extra money, but I got you know another source of income coming in now. So uh, what I might try to do within the next week or two is, is hit a jam night. And then from that jam night, I got to try to see if I can get a gig. But the thing is, I need a vehicle to travel back and forth to the gig, which I don't have yet. Well, I have the vehicle, but I got got to fix it up, and you know how it goes. Uh, but as soon as I do that, then uh, there's going to be like a little bit of a reg tour. Uh, you know, I'd like to do one gig a month and just blow people away, give them the best show of their life once a month, uh, and just work on a show for the entire month and just give them that. And uh, that 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 the playing four nights a week thing. I used to do that. And it was it was fun. Don't get me wrong. But I like putting all my effort, eggs in one basket in that one because I know the payoff is just so good that it, uh, you crave doing it again. Maybe twice uh, a month is fine, like once every two weeks or whatever. Once a week, uh, once a week is is a bit much, but once every two weeks is is kind of fun. But once a month is just is fantastic. You know, it's fantastic. I find that's just a nice, you know, ni- nice uh, nice way to do it. One gig a month, and give somebody, give everybody, the audience the most special shiny thing you can give them for that so anyway i'll leave it at that so if you like this kind of content make sure you smash that like button down below uh and that subscribe button i need as many subscribers as possible make sure you share this to other musicians too that might not have you know they're looking for something new and you know a musician that's kind of you know thinking you know they've their their show's gotten a little bit stagnant um and that they maybe they haven't thought of just trying the same thing you know, just, you know, building a better mousetrap here and just, just, you know, okay, take your acoustic show and transplant it onto something else that you can use. Violin might not be the best thing to start with. That 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 is definitely a very unforgiving instrument. Uh, they say the only thing harder to play than the violin, I think, is the French horn or something like that. So uh, just keep that in mind.